way, so this is a, quite a treat for me, and especially to have such wonderful musicians here, friends of mine, actually, uh, many of you, to uh, celebrate this evening. And in particular, thanks to Henry. Uh, I'd like to say a couple of words about the other two gentlemen who are not here tonight, who are being honored. Um, before we get to Pablo Landro, would mention Ed Sainden, who's uh, working tonight, he was unable to come. Ed is a very shy young man. He's a father of two or three, I think. Yeah, that is. Very shy, very quiet, and uh, he just plays really good. Vibraphone, mm -hmm. piano, drums. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I hate guys like that, you know. But anyway, he, he does, and he's a wonderful teacher. He's been teaching at Berkeley some 30 years or so, I think, uh, close to it. I was also there 30 years. I retired at the turn of the century. <laughs> Henry is one of my students, and we've remained friends since. And he's a wonderful man, a sweet man, and a great musician himself. And I'm uh, pr proud to know him as a friend. At any rate, Pablo was his teacher too, as, as was Ed Sainton. Now, Pablo's different than Ed. Pablo's totally 190 degrees the other. He was totally extroverted. He showed up at the, in the mid to late 70s at Berkeley like a like an explosion. This, uh, this large African American man full of humor and excitement and he, with, he brought from New Jersey to Boston all of his excitement and his wonderful new ideas for the school and he brought African music to Berkeley essentially. I think uh, he was the pioneer of that, as, as I recollect. Now there's a large, relatively large department of Joe Galliota and many other teachers, but Pablo Landrum was our first uh, ethnic percussion, percussionist at Berkeley. And he's quite a character. Uh, he always had jokes, uh, always smiling, always doing eccentric things. I remember one time there was, the students were all buzzing around and in room D, Pablo had a, had a cow hide, yeah. a real cow hide <laughs> on the floor, I mean big, and the students were cutting it up to make skins for their drums, uh, and it was quite wow. dramatic. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he had to be there, I guess. And Henry mentioned this, <laughs> I think the fevers. Henry mentioned a student made his drum, the, the, this beautiful conga drum he just played for us, was made by a student. Pablo encouraged the students to make the instruments that they played, you know, and cut these heads out of cowhides to put on them. This is pretty amazing stuff for Berkeley, which is kind of a, uh, you know, it was new, new for us, this type of thing. Anyway, Pablo was a wonderful, wonderful force, and, and we miss him. He, passed uh, several years back. He made a bunch of great records with Freddie Hubbard and uh, quite a few famous musicians, so he, he could be heard. Uh, but he was certainly an influence on, on all of us, particularly Henry, so he needs to be marked tonight. He's up in heaven playing with Miles and those guys, I'm sure, now. And, you know, he's cool. And Pablo's cool. As for myself, I still teach, as Henry pointed out, I teach at New England Conservatory part-time. And this semester I have one student. <laughs> but he's really good. Keeps me on my toes. And I, uh, I also do workshops with my wife, Yuka. We're going to be uh, doing a workshop at the uh, Boston Drum Center up in Acton early December. And then we're also playing at the Lily Pad this Sunday for any of you who are out and about. Please come to the Lily Pad. Wow. Hear us play with our own quartet. <laughs> anyway, so uh, a few words about Henry. Uh, Henry was a was a terrific student. What, what we all know Henry. We know his smile and his, and his so, he's a soulful man. He's a he's a person that you can't help but to know him is to love him. And and Henry, you're, you're a wonderful friend and a dear friend. Thank you so much for this wonderful occasion. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 